down for the beginning and say, as you see where I deck like this, <laughs> bless I carry a star butterfly for my body. You know, they be on the normal day, I think you're getting me now. But anytime where I did caca like this up to that, you know, it's a little bit less and nine days inside. And the person when we say just they give me the fashion, the cloth, the bam, 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 bam. Now she there here. Yes, so Ngwama herself. Gwami, how are you day? I'm fine. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's why my mind is sweet to me. Look, I give them a small history. When I start this show that time, now after that COVID-19 year, everybody I they read. When they tell me, so, you know, you go be our new presenter for this particular show, I meet people, I say, we could not come dress me now. Then they tell me, say, we only exchange clothes for money. We don't need recognition. Times are hard. Try me say, you come begin, give me credit. Who wants your credit? Pay me money. Then this lady look me, say, no, it's fine. We go do it. So just give me close up, say, they hang out. She they measure me, make them from ground, from the Ankara to the finished products. My sister, we appreciate you on Thank top you. our show this morning. Thank but maybe we right. enter matter with our fashion industry. Now, one question why I like to ask any fashion designer while I meet and I go ask you, I bet no verse. Why I be say sometimes people they get what I ordered for and what I got <laughs> <laughs> from fashion designer hand. What did they happen? I know it's the Nigerian fashion industry, of course, we don't really go far, we don't get international recognition. I see people know us everywhere. But that will not mean say, you know, we'll have see day, you know, okay. inside the matter. Mm -hmm. I remember one time when we say I've been uh person about Egypt. Who be the talk? Who be that guy name? That very popular African player. Ah, I know be football person, I don't forget his name now, but it's an African player. It be Drogba, yes. Drogba be the talk some things when you want to do in wedding. People they talk and say, you know, making try, uh, we said the column, say making try um, patronize. African, African fashion, as why you won't marry. You're not a big person. He said, because making patronizing cousin, giving cousin the contract, making dress, give him. He said that thing, whether I said that in wedding money matter, whether I said the dress no come, I'll be waiting the guy carry come, he no just understand. We shame come again, catch up. You know, so in as much as we don't get that kind of international recognition and whatnot, we still they get this kind, you know, small, small. Yes. What thing they happen? Is there a lack of professionalism for that sector? Or say the space never did very structured. I mean, I just all come as a fair. How you see and you waited the business? Thank you very much, Emi. Mean, good morning once good more. Morning. Thank you for having me on your show. Anytime. I will try to speak my own piece. Anyhow, my English. Put Anyhow, I'll be okay. Mm. Thank you. So for me, with um, the fashion industry, like you said, do you understand? The major thing is um, lack of professionalism. That's actually the main thing. We're dealing with unskilled labor. Mm. That's the truth of the matter. So you would plan, you would make plans, you prepare, do what you're supposed to do as a designer. Then when it gets to the tailors, do you understand? The last men, they either mess you up or do you understand? They do something different mm. from what you've given them. So what I always tell people when it comes to fashion, which is why I, I as much as possible try to discourage people from last minute orders. Okay. It's not that, you know, the tailors, the fashion designers can't meet up with the last minute orders. But we also realize that we're, do, we're dealing with humans. Mm. So machines don't manufacture and produce our clothing in Nigeria just like unlike other developed countries okay. you know, where they have everything automated, you know, you cut this, you put in measurements and it goes in. Mm -hmm. We also have to make provision for that human element and that human error, which, you know, nobody is perfect, I mm -hmm. tell people. Mm -hmm. It comes in from time to time. So you get that, not because wherever it is, you know, wanted to do that, but probably, you know, because of probably last minute, but if it's not last minute, those quotes, quotes are produced, you get to see them, you review them, if there are issues, you're able to go back and quickly correct before the client comes in. Mm. But where you know that doesn't happen, but you know what you're doing with these tailors, I tell people tailors are, they are special, they are blessed, mm. they can frustrate you, they can shut down your business. So because you see a tailor today, he makes something and it's nice, the same measurement, the same style, and you just ask the person, can you reproduce the same, this thing. same thing that you did? And you will come back and you see that it's a mess. Wow. Do you understand? So you always, always have to make provision for that and be prepared for that. So it's not like tailors just wake up and want to give you what I ordered versus what I got. Do you understand? But, you know, and I also tell people sometimes, when people even give you certain things, kindly reject. Or if you're not sure, tell them, I'm sorry, but I cannot make, make this or it will not come out like this. So for me, as much as what I try to tell you, give me a sign. I'm like, okay, do you want exactly this or do you want something nice that is close to this? So once you tell me, okay, this is what I want to ask you. Okay, so what is the attraction? 
in this outfit? What do you like about this outfit? What do you like about this design? So that makes me understand, okay, like you're wearing this, you can tell, oh, it's just the sleeves, do you understand, that I like. I'm like, so the body, I could, you know, tweak it, I could do anything. So when you also put a bit of creativity in whatever it's given to you, mm. it also, you know, breaches that gap. Whereas, okay, I'm not copying whatever you brought, you understand? Mm. Yes, this is what you like. I'm going to incorporate it and then add my design so that we are run away from that, what I ordered versus it what I got. It gets to things where we don't, so we say you don't mention, and really very important. You talk about each of them skilled, label yeah. to start with and the it talks say you know say the issue sometimes they come when you don't give the tailor oh, so yeah. design don't find for people oh, design you can't fine. give tailor the matter yes. so that one means say the fact say person sabi you know sit down in front of machine put clothes not means say you know then sabi am complete complete so for person we say one call enter fashion designing business like you which kind of skills the person supposed to get because at the end of the day, be like say now you go still guide oh, yes. the person when you go. Do so you go do if I want to start, I want a fashion designing business right now. You know which kind of skill you should see things that they're very compulsory. Where me self supposed know how to do. So for me, I always tell people if you want to start the, if you want to go into that industry, yes. I tell people it's always good to have an idea. Mm -hmm of you know the fashion industry it's good to have an idea of the concept of the styles and how to achieve those things so i always tell people even if it's a three months six months course on fashion design and go it would you know give you the basics do you understand you would understand you know okay this is how to take measurement this is how to cut this is how can i achieve this and that mm. so what that also helps you do when clients come in with certain styles you're able to tell them oh this is how you have an idea of how to achieve it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, with sewing and tailoring, for you to perfect, that would take a lot of time. It takes practice and dedication, which you might not have. But I always tell people that if you have the basics, like, for instance, I can come and call my tailor. I'm like, okay, I've sketched the design, you know, I've sorted that. Okay, this is what I want you to do. I say, ah, madam, you know, you know, if you happen, it's not possible. Mm. I'm like, okay, why are you telling me it's not? What exactly is that? Ah, madam, no, this one, no, you cannot do this, so you cannot achieve this, so they use that. So, you know, most of them, they even shy away, you know, from the complex and complicated things. But I'll tell them, no, see that, what's the process? This is what I want. Okay, so we can cut it like this. It's a bias cut. So you still need to guide them. But mm. if you don't have that knowledge and that information, you will not be able to guide them. Okay. You will not be able to direct them on how to achieve it. All right. So you need, you know, the basic information. Know how to, you know, arrive at certain things, do you understand? So you're able to guide them. Okay. That way, do you understand? You have that out of so the not way. So not just, so not just go sit down, go open shop Open down. shop, because if, if you, you do say that, fashion yes, design the tailors would right. run you down. So besides, and run you out of so besides the unskilled labor where you don't discuss, okay. which other challenge if you say the fashion industry they face for Nigeria today? Mm, it plenty you. Okay. Because I tell people that, it's, it's fashion industry in Nigeria. If you want to do it on a large scale, it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. Our major problem, number one, is power. Okay. If the government can at least, you know, give us power, we cut down a lot of costs. You know, people come to you, you're expensive, you're this, and we're like, we're not expensive because we want to, we're expensive because the cost of running a business in Nigeria is expensive. Okay. And for us in the fashion industry, we need power. Power is our lifeline. Okay. For everything we do, we need light. We're cutting, we're ironing, we're sewing, we're ironing, we're going. Everything is about power. So if we don't have light by default, you're running on generator. And it gets to a point whereby the um, four generators can't power you anymore because you're operating, you know, industrial machines, industrial irons, you know, heavy duty steam iron. So you actually need a big lister generator. And the way you flog it, if you flog those generators back to back, you have a 20 kVA in six months, it's down. You're mm. probably having to buy engine, you're probably having to do something. So you keep, you know, getting bigger generators. And I tell people, even with, you know, the high tariff, we're appealing to government. If you give us, like, if we we're paying at a premium, you know, higher than, residential but it's still better than having to run diesel I agree like for me i think in a week i can do like eighty thousand wow. on diesel yes but if i have to do power i can't do more than twenty thousand in a week so by the time you calculate it so you can't even help it and you have the generator you have servicing you know and a whole lot so power it's number one Fantastic. then after that you now go to raw materials do you understand it's sad that you know we had you know textile industries and all that but you know the level of, That's I don't know importing. what to say, where, oh yes, we yes. import basically all the raw materials that we use. So because yes. of that, and every day, dollar keeps going up, you walk into the market today, you buy something today, you come back tomorrow. I didn't even say come back next week. And you're like, ah, but, ah, madam, that's not yesterday. 
This is a new good. Don't change. Dollar don't change, and you can't do anything be about like, it. Not be like. Well, thank you so much. Now, that's the other sick person. Now, I don't tell you. So, if you didn't follow us when I first uh, joined the Monga Good Morning, I just show you go recognize that particular name and the designer, of course, when they dress me up. And I tell you, I say from next week, of course, a new person go take over the show from Wednesday. I want the opportunity, of course, recognize all the designers. We add color to our show, especially when it comes to my own part. Of course, from Limitless Patterns, we'll sit down here with me today, to Clad in Love and Dreams. Of course, they also put them and style by Michi and Kay. I want to say a very big thank you tonight. Not easy for you to just take a chance on person will be saying, I don't know, to add color to a show, onto waiting, to just give you thank you at the end of the day. This is me saying another thank you. Thank you very much, Nguama, for all you do. I wish you the thank best. You.